It's on fire. It's the chair acquisition. This is where we take a game. We tell you if it launches, how it performs, what the graphics are like, and how it controls. Maybe give it a pass, rate that on pass fail, give it a score of one to four chairs. Then we talk about our feelings. We tell you how we like the game, and we rate that on an arbitrary metric of one to four chairs. This week, we're, we're taking a look at Ukulele from Playtronic Games. It was kickstarted many, many, many moons ago. You can pick it up for about 40, 40 US dollars, which is really, really expensive. What is it? Ukulele is an all new open world platformer from genre veterans Playtonic. Explore Hugue, beautiful worlds, meet unforgettable cast of characters, and hoard a vault load of collect collectible collect kleptomaniacs wow, wow. as, as uh, buddy duo <laughs> Yuka and Lele embark on an epic adventure to, court, to thwart corporate creep capital B. <laughs> all right, that, 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 that's an intro, all right. That's so that was, that was definitely there, there, there's. There you go. Uh, so chair acquisition. Then how, how does ukulele run on gonna, uh, on Ubuntu? Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to break your game on three different systems. Ubuntu, Fedora, and Solus. I'm going to start off with that LTS goodness on how it ran on my Ryzen 1700 with a 980 displayed at UHD. I hope you like windowed mode because it launches in windowed mode no matter what. You know, you do have to fiddle with the screen resolution in-game to make it pop full screen. I, I could not find a way around this. It reliably launched in a 3840 by 2160 window. And until I jiggled, giggity, then I changed the resolution a little bit. I don't know if I really had to jiggle, but I like to do that. Then it would pop into full screen. Goodness, every single time. Performance. I was a bit worried about that when the game first launched. Uh, it is the Unity joint. OpenGL uh, reports that it didn't run all that well, but... Here it is, coming to the end of 2018. It runs just fine with the 980 at 1080p. Solid 60, 5960 right there, but nothing any lower than that. Graphically, it does look a lot better than I was expecting. Even though you're seeing, you know, hipster pixel goodness, because of course Pedro played the dumb minigame. Uh, I liked it. <laughs> it's not hipster it's pixel. It's <laughs> nice. It's bright. Eight of the three models look straight out of the fuck mothering eight, well, not 80s, 90s. Late 90s, too. It even has a dancing save icon. Come on. That's charming. As far as it comes down to control, quitting is an option with ukulele. Seriously. Quit is in the fucking options menu. You can't make that up. That took me a minute. Wow. Um, then you got to fight the camera. You know, there there's an option to put the camera on manual. And even on manual, that camera is still a bit of a dick. And when it comes to controls... I'm not going to say floaty as fuck. Pedro always says floaty as fuck. And they're not. They're not. But I will say uh, floaty as fuck's second nephew. All right. 100% on that. You can legitimately blame the controls for getting you killed to death on occasion. That's just, that's a fact with this game. I'm not the only one saying that. Go look at the Steam reviews if you don't believe me. Uh, sometimes the controls and the camera, however, get together and do this tag team of nope. And it's straight up <laughs> dying a fire city. And... You can't even be mad at it because he's like, there's no way I could have unfucked that situation. Thanks. Anyway, pretty much a clean bill of health, except for that windowing issue, because that's kind of a dick move every single time you want to play a game. But I'm going to be able to give it a solid three. Yeah, I had no such uh, windowing issues, um, although all of a sudden disabling VSync on my system made it favor my leftmost monitor. So I had to shift my position. That was a little <laughs> strange, but nothing, nothing too gameplay ruining worthy. Uh, performance wise, yeah, it, my, my my 1080 Ti run, running this uh, with Fedora 28 and i7 6700K had no problem dealing with this game. It curb checked it at UHD. I was getting about um, 60 usually. I, I didn't I didn't notice any particularly bad drops. I wasn't eyeing the little uh, reticle whatever the entire time. Um, yeah, graphics wise, I mean they're they're simple. They get the job done. They're definitely reminiscent of that sort of N sixty four era rare platformer that this game is targeting the nostalgia of. Um, yeah, every, every, every everything is definitely colorful. I'll give it that. Um, some of the some of the, some of the speech though, everyone just kind of sounds like they're having boring sex. They're going uh, <laughs> uh, 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 now. I, now there, there's a, there's actually like a there's actually some really interesting stories as to why that was the case in Banjo Kazooie and their games. And Grant Her Kirkhope has like a bunch of uh, talks and videos about why things are what they are. But unfortunately, we're not on we're not on the N64. We're on you know modern PCs with multiple Dude, CPUs. Did, and, when you noticed that there was an option to shut it the hell up, when you're like, oh, oh thank Flying Spaghetti mm -hmm. Monster. Oh no, I, I I muted that right away. Um, 
Yeah. Quit, quitting being an option was kind of weird. I just, like, when I didn't find the first pass, I'm like, also, okay. Also, I would like to apologize for Pedro playing a fucking mini game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of the game. Yeah, I don't the, play the, it again. It's just that the game tricked me. <laughs> no, it, yeah, the, the, the menus definitely do that when you're, like, trying to get out of a dialogue. It does the Zelda thing where it's like, do you want to hear this again? No. I mean, yes. I mean, shit. What did I press? And then you go through the, you go through the entire spiel again. Um, control wise, it works out of the box with the DualShock 4 controller. Of course, you get the Xbox prompts, but this is sort of life. If you're, if you're going to be living that DualShock life, you gotta, you gotta learn how to deal with that. I'll give it a solid four chairs. No real technical issues. Um, that, that I ran into at least. Yeah. All right. So, uh, over here, I ran into all the technical issues. Uh, I am playing on Solus, uh, with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So, uh, it launches if you have the game set to full screen and it also it always launches in that window but then it full screens once it uh, gets to the menu proper so uh that bit works just fine but if you have the goal of changing it to windowed mode um i hope you don't have a graphics card that can uh, you know output a maximum resolution of 32,767 pixels by 32,767 pixels because the game will do its damnedest to render at that resolution and it will fail miserably uh but yeah it's um it doesn't it it, that's an annoying bit, but if you just leave it at full screen, it works just fine, but it's still losing its share because of that. The performance at 1080p was 60, at 2160p it was 60, so really no complaints there. The graphics, they're pretty and cell shaded the sounds get annoying after a little bit, and fuck that quote-unquote voice acting. And uh, the controls, the 8-bit-2, where is it? There it is. 8-bit-2 um, controller. Worked out of the box, no Probably issues here. Listeners. But when the uh, when I realized that if you push the right trigger and the right button, but right bumper at the same time, it would cause uh, the game to see these two buttons as like the start button. And that got really annoying, so I wanted to go and change it, and I couldn't. So, no rebindable controls in 2018 loses you another chair. So, two chairs from me on Solus. All right, well, again, that gaming distribution Solus makes gaming real, really easy under Linux, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, up next, fun. Ven, did you have fun with uh, your $40 game that you got for, like, five? Hey, man, uh, I've never not cared about something so hard in my life. <laughs> really. Now, I don't want you to confuse that with hate, or even mild anger. It's more of an extreme indifference, if anything. Because by the time Banjo-Kazooie rolled out, I would already bought a Voodoo 1 and separated myself from the filthy console peasants. So what can I say about ukulele? You run around, you collect things to expand things that let you ultimately collect more things. The game. The worlds, they're mostly empty, and the baddies, eh, they're effectively the same, providing more of an annoyance versus any real challenge that I could find. The puzzles, they're sometimes complicated, but I kind of felt that was mainly due to them being not very well telegraphed. So, kind of coming from a zero nostalgia point of view, I have a rather primitive uh, collectathon. With the paper-thin story, slippery controls, that does a little more than remind me of what games did wrong in the old days. It's not bad, though. You know? If you're going to say anything differently from that, it's because of one of two things. One, ukulele does an excellent job of reminding you of a different time from the long, long ago. And good on this game for being able to do that. And so you're able to overlook some of its shortcomings. And hey, man, I feel you on that. I got the same feels for other games like Axiom Verge. It reminded me of some old Metroid goodness, and it had flaws that I could easily overlook. I don't have it with this game. Or maybe it's option two. You're still trying to justify paying 30 bucks for this fucking game. <laughs> All right. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll give this one tier, because if I paid 40 bucks for this, I would have fucking refunded it. Uh, I know some people have mad love for this game, Plenty of respect to you uh, if it brings you back to that good, good time. However, I feel 2017, 2018, don't have it for this, man. There's a whole lot of 
what I basically took as empty ass worlds with nothing to do other than explore. I will say good on the developers for hiding shit because I've straight up got <laughs> fallen off cliffs because of the camera uh, and ended up in some places like I should not be here. And there was a fucking feather. I was like, <laughs> what really? I don't even know how I could get here intentionally. So good on you for that. What about you, Jay baby? Yeah, that, that was the thing. I, I sort of noticed the opposite uh, for your final point of like, there are a couple places where I'd be like, you know what? This seems like it's it's allowing me to go up here and it's really out of the way. So maybe there's something up here. And then there wasn't. I'm like, well, that's kind of a missed <laughs> opportunity. One of, the, one of the cool things about Breath of, the, Breath of the Wild is that there's so much shit like randomly thrown throughout the map that you can't you can't like fucking take three steps without running into something. And being like, oh, someone deliberately put this there. This is really cool. Someone, th this came up during design or development. And they figured either th this is going to be a thing that's going to attract people or, you know, someone's going to find their way up here. We should give them something. Um, but playing the game, I, I played a bunch of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie back in the N64 days. And it's basically that with the serial numbers filed ops off. Uh, Mr. Foxdog <laughs> has some opinions about that. And yes, I understand. That is the point of the game. But again, we're in 2018, so I've, I've played this game already. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a bog-standard 3D platformer. It sort of harkens back to the N64 era of, hey, here's a bunch of stuff you can do. Hey, we have physics. Hey, you can sort of... You you have you have that third axis that you can explore. Um, but yeah, like Ben said, you run around, collect things, do some puzzles, unlock power-ups to do more puzzles, to unlock more puzzles, to rinse and repeat. And there's certainly a lot of stuff to do. There's lots of little challenges and... Um, quests and you got to go collect all your pages and you'll periodically get more challenges after getting more and more pages. Um, but yeah, no, the, the complaints, of course, the camera sucks. There's there's one challenge in the in the first level where you have to like go through this slippery obstacle course and the camera just I, I had it lined up perfectly so I could make all the jumps necessary and the camera's all like, Haha, well, no. Um, and I mean, it's 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 a perfectly serviceable game. There, there's there's well, like I mean, just like on the topic of controls, what we're looking at is doing the target range. How much of a crapshoot oh. is that? <laughs> so so that that was a crapshoot until they, just how much of a crapshoot that is. Well, well, it, what, what, what's what's great too is after you leave, they're like, by the way, we didn't tell you this when you could have needed it, but if you hold down the left stick, you get a little targeting reticule that you can use. <laughs> That's um, that is necessary for some of the later pu puzzles where you have to like, where you have to actually like line up your shot while uh, like a crank is in a specific position so you can generate platforms to climb up on. Um, but I, I mean, like, that's sort of part of the course for these sort of N64 3D platformer games. And it does a good job of representing what they were. And if you like them, then you'll probably have fun playing ukulele. It's a, like it's a, it, like I said, it's a perfectly serv serviceable game, but it's not $45 good. And that, that that's really where this game sort of falls through is if 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 you price that at like $15, I would I would without it, without hesitation, give this a recommendation. But, you know, for paying in excess of 30 no, it's you're, you're not you're not you're not going to get that value there. So I'll give it two chairs. It's solid. It's all right. Yeah, Pedro? I didn't have an N64. I didn't even know anyone with one. Uh, when it comes to uh, Benjo Kazooie, I have zero nostalgia for that game. So for this one, yeah, it doesn't even get that. Um, that said, it's a game about collecting things just so you can unlock other areas that you guessed it you collect more things and back in the day that was enough that was what games were for you it was basically an exercise in repetition and it was fine because well the technology didn't allow for much of anything else nowadays the sole reward for doing one thing being more of that thing it's just a bit meh and well i would say that the uh Ukulele is a good game for a proto-human, but after My Brother Rabbit and The Gardens Between and how much those games did with far, far less in the way of anything, uh, it's, uh, that, that argument seems a whole lot less poignant. So, yeah, if you got that uh, Humble Bundle that had this game on like the $5 tier or something, that was great. That, that That's what you should uh, be paying for this game. If you're paying full price, just don't. Yeah, just, just don't. So for me, it gets two chairs because it's perfectly acceptable for what it is. It's just not blowing anyone's mind. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Ukulele. It's been however long since this game released. We finally got a check position out for it. So now mm-hmm. you can know if it's worth it to spend your 45 Canadian dollars 